We've all had to overcome challenges in video games, be they tough bosses or difficult puzzles, or not spending all of our money on microtransactions in free-to-play mobile games. Repo man, I'm here to get the chair. Look, we'll talk about this later. Sometimes, however, the hardest hurdles to overcome are the moments where you have to do something you don't want to do in order to proceed, and are left with only two options. Do the horrible thing, or eject the game disc and throw it in the bin. Here at Times, we seriously contemplated doing the latter. Enjoy, and beware major spoilers ahead for the following games. Desmond, we can't climb this. How about you give me a boost? That's a bad idea. I could throw you into the air and you grab the ledge. Even worse. Lucy Stillman from the early Assassin's Creed games was definitely our favourite member of Desmond's Scooby gang of modern day assassins. Mainly because she wasn't Sean Hastings. Good job. We'll just wait up here then, shall we? Yeah, all alone with, with massive targets painted on our backs. Quiet, Sean. Even when it turned out that Lucy was secretly working with the Templars to betray the Assassin Order, we knew that deep down she was conflicted, and her will-they-won't-they -they relationship with Desmond was something that we were keen to see develop over subsequent Assassin's Creed games. Desmond, that was pretty... awesome. Or at least we were keen, until the game made us stab her. At the end of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, after platforming through an unused Tron set, Desmond discovers an Apple of Eden and perhaps unwisely decides to put his hands all over it. I know this, I know that symbol. That, that's a Phrygian cap. It stands for freedom. And that, that's a Masonic eye. Sean, not now. Jeez. The upshot of this decision is that time freezes and Desmond finds himself possessed by Juno, one of the surviving members of the first civilization, who recognizes Lucy as a traitor and wants to use Desmond to make sure that Lucy doesn't jeopardize her plans. Stop, please. Come on, Desmond, resist. Or at least, you know, pivot a bit to the left and maybe you can get Sean instead, eh? No. Still, this is all down to Juno up to this point, so there's nothing you can do about it. That is until the game gives you the prompt to press any button. Oh, okay, so now this is on me. Is it Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? Well, what if I don't press any button at all? How about that? Oh, okay, fine. It is done. I'm only doing this because I get to be a pirate in the fourth one. The vital apparatus vent will deliver a weighted companion cube in three, two, one. Oscar Wilde wrote that each man kills the thing he loves, which explains my total lack of success with houseplants. In a similar vein, there's Portal. The game is a pretty lonely experience, given how you're the solitary test subject in a deserted lab, and your only company is an AI who skipped the day they covered Asimov's laws of robotics at AI school. The Enrichment Center is required to remind you that you will be baked and then there will be cake. That might be why we glom so hard onto the weighted companion cube when GLaDOS introduces us. This weighted companion cube will accompany you through the test chamber. Please take care of it. The companion cube is less of a sentient ally and more of an inanimate science box. But at this point in our isolation, a crate with hearts becomes a dearer friend than all our childhood pets combined. Even Monty the Golden Retriever, who would sing bark jingle bells at Christmas. He was such a good dog. Anyway, then after you and your boxy buddy have made great puzzle progress and strides in human-cuboid relations, this happens. You did it. The weighted companion cube certainly brought you good luck. However, it cannot accompany you for the rest of the test and, unfortunately, must be euthanized. Please escort your companion cube to the Aperture Science Emergency Intelligence Incinerator. It turns out your emotional attachment to the cube versus your resolve to complete tests is just another variable in GLaDOS's testing regime. Or possibly she's just having a right laugh. While it has been a faithful companion, your companion cube cannot accompany you through the rest of the test. If it could talk, and the Enrichment Center takes this opportunity to remind you that it cannot, it would tell you to go on without it because it would rather die in a fire than become a burden to you. In any case, because of Oscar Wilde, you've literally no choice but to dump your new and best friend in a laboratory-grade fire pit. Although the euthanizing prop, you euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. 
Congratulations. <laughs> Just like Monty all over again. At least that's what mum told me happened. Now that I say it out loud, it seems kind of unlikely. You probably just got into the chocolate again. Hey. Hey. I'm Leo. Vincent. Listen, thanks. Don't mention it. A Way Out is a cooperative game in which you and a friend play as Vincent and Leo, who escape from prison together and form an unbreakable bond that carries them through their adventures as they travel to Mexico to kill a crime lord, stopping only to play darts and baseball and go on swings together. What the hell are we doing? I don't know. You sat down first. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Did I? This is getting awkward. All right, almost go on the swings together. It's adorable, anyway. Vincent and Leo are bros, is what I'm saying, which is why it comes as such a shock when you return from Mexico after killing the crime lord and don't open a small artisanal bakery together, but instead it turns out that Vincent is a cop and he's going to arrest Leo now, thanks. What follows is a bigger rug pull than the finals of the World's Strongest Carpet Salesman Championships, as all of a sudden you and your co-op partner are thrown into opposition with each other in a grim death match that only one of you can walk away from. Here you go. Good job, Vincent. I'm sorry, Leo. At this point in A Way Out, I really felt like Vincent and Leo were past this. Surely there was another option, A Way Out, so to speak, where these two talked through their differences and Vincent decided that just this time, maybe, he'd let a criminal go free because he'd learned a lesson from their adventures together and was a changed man? Nope, super keen on shooting. Eventually, you wind up in a final showdown, and whichever one of you is first to get the gun is given a prompt to raise the gun and kill their former co-op comrade. To which I say, come on a way out, both these guys are decent people, both of them have kids, and do you really want to let either of them die with that facial hair situation? <coughs> Guess so. What rankles most is that none of this needed to happen. There was no reason for Vincent to reveal that he was an undercover cop in front of Leo. If the 5-0 just kept up the charade long enough to have them both be arrested and separated, Vincent could just go home. Anyway, if you want to finish the game, you have to go through with it, which is tragic, but at least there is one positive. Leo totally does redeem his facial hair situation. Ah, so you've copied my beard. Good choice. What is it? Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We cannot allow the infection to spread. In Metal Gear Solid 5, the Diamond Dogs are an elite private military force who've been press ganged into service using balloons. Hmm? Welcome to the Diamond Dogs. Despite the somewhat involuntary nature of their recruitment, most Diamond Dogs come to feel like part of the family on Mother Base, and they all have one thing in common, their unwavering respect and loyalty to the boss. Boss, thanks for saving that puppy. That, and a stupid nickname. Like I said, so the Diamond Dogs is one big, happily, heavily armed, and nationally unaffiliated family. That is until late in the game during the mission Shining Lights Even in Death when Snake is called back to Mother Base to deal with a sticky situation. It seems that while you were off having adventures with D-Dog, there was an outbreak of vocal cord parasite infections at Mother Base. I guess the parasites killed him. Don't touch him, he's covered in blood. With no cure, the stricken soldiers have been quarantined on one of the platforms and there's nothing for it but for Snake to enter the quarantine zone wearing a gas mask and personally euthanize all the infected. You have to shoot, boss. We can't let them outside. I mean, is there nothing for it, Metal Gear Solid? Couldn't we just, I don't know, send them in a TV and some snacks or something? Or maybe we could divert some of the money we're using to fund development of inflatable snakes into developing a cure? No, apparently letting those soldiers live could put the whole world at risk. And so Venom Snake has to go in there and dispatch them by hand. Something they do not make easy on you. Help me. Help me. Your iDroid isn't helping either, announcing staff member has died and notifying you of just how much your heroism is decreasing every time. Uh, 
Yeah, I know, I droid. Yeah, I get it. Okay, that one shot himself, so better? It's not better, is it? Worst of all, however, has to be these guys, who are all so earnest and loyal that they actually salute you. And you're expected to kill them all. Still, at least we managed to save this one uninfected soldier. Got a survivor, unlock the door. Oi. I, I don't think I made it after all. Oh, for God damn it, Metal Gear Solid 5. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. In Heavy Rain, purported Andy lookalike Ethan Mars is trying to find his son Sean, who's been kidnapped by the Origami Killer, a serial killer so good he can kill people without you knowing why you're playing as him. So you found my little secret? It's over, Scott. All those children killed just to find a father capable of saving his son? Shut up! You don't understand. Not cool, Scott. We look away for one second. Anyway, to discover the location where his son is being held, Ethan is forced by the origami killer to go through five trials. Because someone apparently saw Saw recently, most of these trials involve Ethan inflicting horrible pain or psychological torture on himself to prove how much he loves his son. <laughs> It's the third trial, named The Lizard, however, that almost made us start convincing ourselves that maybe Sean was having a nice time in a tank slowly filling with rainwater, and who were we to interfere anyway? In this trial, Ethan is given five minutes to cut his own finger off. A quick glance around the room reveals that it is full of implements that are almost comically unsuited to the task, such as a butcher's knife stuck into the wall, a pair of pliers in the television stand, and a pair of scissors in the bathroom. And let me tell you right now, the origami killer isn't going to fall for this. He's a pretty smart guy. While it's true that you can choose to leave the apartment and not complete the trial, each trial you skip makes it harder to find Sean. And since one of the later trials asks you to actually kill someone, you might want to save your get out clause for that. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. So, Good luck trying to make this inescapably painful process as painless as possible. Sure, you can sugar the pill a bit, give Ethan some wood to bite on, down some whiskey to numb the pain, disinfect the wound or cauterize it with a heated iron rod, but the fact remains that the finger is coming off if you're really committed to getting something like a good ending. <laughs> Just don't use the scissors, would be our advice. So let us not despair. We I'd say that's the gate. The men of Delta Force. They will be next. Adams, take care of the lookout. I'm on it. Spec Ops The Line is a military shooter that seeks to make its players ask deep questions, such as, should war be treated as an entertainment? To what lengths will people go to justify their actions? And is that Nolan North? Is John Conrad the greatest man I ever served with? Well, I don't know. I think it's Nolan North. One question the game doesn't ask you, however, is would you like to use white phosphorus to kill a bunch of civilians? Because that is a mandatory part of the game that you have to go through with if you want to carry on playing. You're f kidding, right? That's white phosphorus. Yeah, I know what it is. You've seen what this shit does. You know what you, you might not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. Yeah, but there isn't though, is there, Spec Ops The Line? Beyond the choice of use white phosphorus or run back and forth along this ridge until you feel like you've got $50 worth of entertainment out of this game. You ain't Walker. We'll fire. I'm gonna be a while. Eventually, if you want to continue with the game, you'll have to use the white phosphorus, at which point you'll discover that there's a reason that it's banned by signatory countries in the 1980 Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons Protocol. That's because it's a nightmare weapon that burns people to death, and while you think you're using it against a military target, surprise, those guys are actually helping rescue civilians, and now you're a monster. That in order? Yeah, it is. Fine. Launching camera. 
Spec Ops The Line proceeds to spend the rest of the game dragging you for your actions, which we again remind you were unavoidable and we didn't want to do in the first place. How about you give us a choice next time? Go on, Walker. Do it. Please. Why are you just standing there? Oh, okay, I take it back. Jeez, choices are hard. If we understood Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, and we did, the point is that ethics are mad tricky. Now, we're no strangers to pursuing an unethical course of action in the face of a mounting sense of guilt. Like the time I ate Andy's whole birthday cake. That was you! Multiply that sensation a quintillion times, subtract the deliciousness of stolen cake, and you've got something that approximates the experience of Shadow of the Colossus, in which you gallop around a vast serene land, climbing vast serene giants and killing them, which, rude. In this game, it's not that there's a single moment in which you're forced to do something you don't want to do, it's more that the whole game is a collection of moments in which you power through your growing suspicion that what you're doing isn't right, and very possibly, is very, very wrong. your alternative option? I mean, obviously, other than the secret alternative option, where you learn the ancient language of these gentle giants, apologise for stabbing them in their Achilles tattoos, and join forces with them to destroy the temple and the morally dubious forces within. Psych! There's not really a secret alternative at all. Just like with eating Andy's birthday cake. You owe me a new cake! Ethics. Oh. PT was the playable teaser for the now sadly cancelled Silent Hills, a collaboration between Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, Walking Dead star Norman Reedus, and horror manga legend Junji Ito that promised to be more nightmare inducing than a midnight cheese binge. Due to PT's status as a teaser for an upcoming game, it was more of a mood piece, and as such, gameplay mostly comprised you walking down a corridor over and over again, occasionally stopping to look at horrible things. Ah! Even when I know it's coming! The moment that almost made us uninstall the playable teaser and dunk the PlayStation in holy water, however, was the loop in which you round the corner to discover that the previously unoccupied hallway is now occupied. <laughs> Checking the other direction reveals that there isn't anywhere else for you to go. The door you came in through is closed, the windows won't open, and no matter how many times you try to headbutt the walls, they aren't budging. Your only option is to walk down the hallway towards Lisa, the unnatural apparition that we remind you is making sounds that indicate she isn't likely to offer you a nice cup of tea and a biscuit when you reach her. Summon enough courage to stroll down the corridor at her, and you'll find the lights go out and Lisa vanishes, because of course she does. Getting murdered on your own terms isn't PT's style. Much better to have Lisa murder you when you aren't expecting it. Ah! Even when I know it's coming! Don't touch that dial now, we're just getting started. So those were some of the awful, harrowing video game moments that we didn't want to go through with, but something you are going to want to go through with is clicking on one of these links to watch more videos. So up here is a video from Outside Extra in which we talk about the best video game adaptations we've ever seen, minus Street Fighter, I think you'll find that's the correct answer. Down here is a video from us about evil achievements, where you chose to be evil and you were rewarded for it. Kind of bad, bad message. Thanks for watching.